when we look at uh, what's going on in the EU. As I mentioned, current regulations are already restricting things like PFOS, PFHXS, PFOA, PFCAs, PFHXA. They're all being controlled under the Stockholm Convention, POPs, REACH, you know, uh, different regulations within the EU. Um, and then also there's an SVC list, as you know, which those end up going on the, of the authorization list eventually, and you need authorization to use those in the EU when that happens under Annex 14. And we can see that there's a lot of those already on the SVHC list. They just added a new one two days ago as part of the SVHC 233 release. Right? And then there's also some PFAS that are got ongoing evaluations that, um, you know, getting classifications under CLP, that's the first step into getting finally restricted under another regulation, right? So uh, efforts slowly ongoing to restrict these on a case-by-case -case basis in the EU. Now, there is a ban uh, on firefighting foams, which we really don't care too much about, but I've included it here because it gets a lot of publicity from the EU. Um, and basically, they're expecting a draft opinion on that in March, uh, with the final uh, opinion expected in June. Uh, I would expect that to go forward, but again, not really impact the electronics producers. But what does impact us is the proposed broadband on all PFAS use that was proposed by Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, Norway, and Sweden. So they ganged up and decided that, hey, we need to do something about PFAS, so we're just restrict it all, right? Now, the initial proposal said that it excludes essential uses, but did not define what essential uses are. So that would be something that would need to happen, right? We would need to have almost like an exemption list or an essential uses list on where we can use PFAS. Instead of saying we where we can't use it, we're going to just not allow it unless we've identified it as an essential use, basically, is the approach that they're proposing. Now, um, ECHA just received the final proposal from them last week. So uh, they have committed to making that publicly available on February 7th. So watch for that, because that's going to be a very interesting proposal, I think. And it's going to set the tone for 2023 and what happens in PFAS. Um, once they post that, then there will be a six-month consultation period starting in March. They're going to have a, a meeting uh, in April to kind of go over how you can participate in that. So if you feel like you want to get involved with this, I encourage you to follow that and get involved. There's also a, a proposed restriction on PFHXA by Germany, but that's kind of stalled because um, you know, if this broad ban moves forward, then there's really no um, you know, reason to move forward with PFHXA uh, as, a, as a specific uh, you know, restriction, but um, they could actually pick that up and start carrying that ball again. So you might want to keep an eye on that as well if you're using that substance. Learn more by viewing the full-length video online at greensofttech.com slash videos. Plus, learn about our environmental regulation solutions online at greensofttech.com.